What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. So I'm back with my latest boxing review, 24-7, Timothy Bradley versus Juan Manuel Marquez. And it seemed like when all of the big coverage for fights and some of the bigger fights in recent memory, the pay-per-view-esque fights, have shifted over to Showtime, a.k.a. All Access, uh, we're finally getting a 24-7. Honestly, I don't remember the last 24-7 I watched um, besides... Chavez and Martinez, Chavez Jr. and Martinez, and Nonito Donaire and Rigondeaux, I think, was the very latest one that they had. Um, now they had Timothy Bradley versus Marquez, and HBO put in good work. It was a very enthralling, entertaining episode to me, um, and they showed that they are the originators of this shit. All Access, um, I definitely enjoyed those as well, but um, this 24-7 was definitely well put together, and I found myself thoroughly enjoying it especially after the Chavez Jr. Brian Vera bullshit robbery. Um, it was good just to see some good old-fashioned training and boxing and kind of get my mind off of um, the boxing politics. So I thought it was a real good episode. Um, I think they they started this episode strong. I think they're only doing two episodes, the fights in two weeks. Um, Timothy, Bradley, Timothy Bradley versus Marquez. Um, they focused um, on... Timothy Bradley for the first portion of it. They were talking about his trials and tribulations. One cool thing is both fighters, Bradley and Marquez, in recent memory, have wins over Pacquiao um, in far different um, outcomes. Timothy Bradley's win was highly disputed. It caused a lot of controversy, which led to death threats, which led to a lot of resentment from fans thinking that he robbed Pacquiao. And then Marquez is almost the polar opposite. Longtime rival who fought three other times, and in the fourth fight, he knocked Pacquiao the, the fuck out. So, it was real cool, in my opinion, to see the contrast side by side and hear it from both fighters. Um, you got one fighter, Timothy Bradley, who's basically saying, if I would have lost to Pacquiao, my life would have been better. I wouldn't have been ridiculed, and my family wouldn't receive death threats, and um, just being tarred and feathered from the boxing public based on his uh, controversial win over Pacquiao. Meanwhile, Marquez is celebrated. He went back to Mexico, the Ramonza gym, and he's a star. He has people coming in nonstop into, in and out of the gym and saying, hey, you changed my life. They even showed somebody who had a tattoo, looked like they had a Marquez tattoo. And it's good, and you know, I thought it was cool to see the contrast. One person beat Pacquiao, and basically his life was ruined from that fight. And the other person is celebrated based on how he executed his game plan and how he beat Pacquiao. So that was cool. Um, it was good hearing from Timothy Bradley's dad. It just anytime they involve other people, not just the fighters, I think it's it's good just to hear that other um, perspective. Not just the fighters hearing from their trainers. They had Joel Diaz. Um, they had Nacho Berstein. And they also had Timothy Bradley's dad. He said something funny to me. He was saying, basically, you could throw rocks at my house. You can damage my car, but don't fuck with my family. He's like, I'm 50 years old. I'll go to jail. I'll, I'll, I'll go to jail. I'll do a sentence. Just don't fuck with my loved ones. Um, he said, then I got to hurt you. So I thought that was a, a funny part. A uh, good on-screen camera moment with Timothy Bradley's pops. And it shows you how hardcore his dad is his dad um there's a lot of stories timothy bradley has told basically saying that his dad was very strict he was uh pushing timothy bradley and fast forward to the future that's why we see timothy bradley in these wars with um ruslan provotnikov or tough 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 fights or whatnot and um still being able to to outlast and and remain standing by the end of the at, at the end of the fight you know what i mean he's a tough dude and I think a lot of it can be attributed to his, his father's teachings and everything that his father instilled in him at a young age. Just the, the warrior mentality, don't give up, don't be second best, um, keep pushing yourself and that kind of stuff. So it was good to see that relationship. Also good to hear from um, Bradley when he was talking about the Ruslan Provotnikov fight in detail. He was basically saying what he went through and... Just the whole Pacquiao, just showing the highlights. Um, I like, I really like how they did for the Marquez and Pacquiao four. They showed all the highlights, and it was almost 
Marquez giving uh, John Madden play-by-play -play leading up to the fight. He says Pacquiao always leans forward after he faints, and that's when he caught him. And then they, they kind of depict everything. So it's almost like you can relive the fight, and they show you the scenes that relates to what Marquez is saying. So it's almost like you're you're reliving or you're, you're seeing what Marquez is thinking. And I thought that was pretty cool. If you watch the episode, you should know what I'm talking about. But yeah, he's just giving a kind of a play-by-play -play what was happening, what he noticed, um, his struggle, because obviously he was hurt in the in the Pacquiao 4 fight. Pacquiao, he says, after he knocked down Pacquiao early in the fight, just the knockdown, um, Nacho Berstein said he was worried because he said he's seen the look in Pacquiao's eyes. He had that look of rage, like he wanted immediate vindication. He wanted to um, even the score, and he wanted to get revenge. He said, that's what Nacho Berstein said. So these are just great on-screen moments with, with these fighters and trainers. Um, Nacho Berstein said Pacquiao had that fury. Like He's like, I could tell from the moment um, he got knocked down and got back up in the first the first knockdown that he wanted revenge. And then they show the, the actual clip, and it looked like Pacquiao really wanted revenge. Like He was like, oh, you got me. Like Let's go. And then um, Nacho Berstein keeps going on talking about how he um, how he was attacking Marquez violently, and he said he started to worry. And then they show everything leading up to the knockout. So I thought it was well depicted, and then they give you the visual aids and the actual footage from the fight to to support what they're saying. So I just I thought it was really clever how they had it all pieced together, and I really liked it. Um, they also dabbled in the whole drug testing controversy with Bradley and um, Marquez. They had the face-off, and when I did my review on the face-off, I mentioned how they kind of omitted the whole drug testing controversy, so they went in that in detail a little bit, and I got to learn a little bit more about what kind of drug testing they're actually doing. So it doesn't look like they're using USADA or VADA testing, um, which is what I heard, but I didn't know exactly what they are using. So I guess for the first time in boxing history, they're using the Nevada State Athletic Commission, but they're doing some kind of new test that's more comprehensive and more intuitive than just the standard test. Like basically the Nevada State Commission is doing their own kind of Olympic style random blood testing or they were saying that we don't even really know what it is. Like we're not going to know until after the fight, like they're not really revealing it. It's random. They could show up whenever. They could show up at Marquez's home. They could show up at the gym. Same thing with Timothy Bradley. These fighters don't really know when and where. They just have to be ready to submit. And I guess they're keeping it all under wraps and not going to reveal anything until after the fight. So we don't really know. And he said if one of them tests positive, then of course the fight will be off. So it was good to see that. Um, as always on, on the all axis, is their 24 7s. At the very end, they have like a training montage, which really gets you pumped. Gets me pumped with this fight. Um, like I said, there's just a lot of words of wisdom. Um, I really liked um, Bradley just reflecting on the Ruslan Provotnikov fight. Very tough fight for him. Just reliving it and showing the highlights of that. Joel Diaz said Bradley wasn't listening. Bradley pretty much acknowledges that. He acknowledges that um, both Joel Diaz and Bradley acknowledge that they can't make the same mistakes with uh, Juan Manuel Marquez, he's too smart, he's too clever, and he's a thinker in there, so he'll capitalize on those mistakes, which is what I've been saying all along. He definitely can't fight the Ruslan Provotnikov style against a Marquez. And one thing I can say for the record is with HBO, when you compare it to Showtime's All Access, one thing I do have to say I like better is HBO's narrator. I think the narrator, he just has a cooler voice on HBO's 24-7 as opposed to the narrator on all access he's not horrible on all access but i think i'd like the the narrator um better on hbo's 24 7 and for those of you guys that follow movies movie buffs like myself you'll know that the narrator for hbo's 24 7 is actor Liev schreiber and you may know him if you've seen the wolverine origins with um what's his name hugh jackman he played Sabretooth. He's also in the Wes Craven movie Scream. He played Cotton Weary, the convicted killer or whatnot. Um, he's also in that TV show on Showtime, which is ironic because shout out to Liev Schreiber. He's, he's definitely getting um, that network money. He's doing the narration for 
HBO's 24-7, and he has a new Showtime series called Ray Donovan, so he's getting money both ways from both networks, which is cool. Can't knock the, knock the player, can't knock the hustle, so um, let me know what you guys think in terms of the narrator. So, all in all, I really liked this episode. It was entertaining. Um, it was a great night of boxing minus the robbery. And I really enjoyed it. Look forward to the next episode of it. Let me know what you guys think of this episode of 24-7. Marquez versus Bradley. Do you like this? Do you like All Access better? Leave a comment and let me know what you guys think. As always, hate, comment, or subscribe. Till next video, it's Ego. Signing off.